Hello everyone, just wanted to do a quick video to talk about how to set up JavaFX on VS Code. So for most of you, this will be a pretty straightforward process, but for some of us who are running on M1 Apple computers, this might be a little bit of a manual process. So let's just jump right in here. I'm gonna first create a new project. So Command Shift P or Control Shift P, we're gonna create Java project. So uh, the first way is to create it from a template. So we'll do Java FX create from archetype. This is gonna be a Maven project. I'll keep all of the group IDs default. I'll do um, this Maven FX maybe. And it's going to ask us to look for a folder. We'll just pick some Java folder here and it will ask us to name some defaults and we're just gonna just enter through all of these defaults and we'll open up this project. And so when we open up this source folder, we should see that there is already going to be an app.java that's given to us. And for most of us, this is going to be sufficient. So if we just run this application, this should give us a window. Now you'll notice that for me, because I'm on an M1, this gives me uh, some library prism ES2 problems. This is uh, has something to do with the modules. And it turns out that M1s don't really play too well with certain versions of JavaFX. So I'm gonna jump over to palm.xml and I'm gonna change this to the latest version of Java and I'm gonna change this to the latest version of JavaFX. So currently the latest version as of this recording is 21.0.1. .1. I'll talk about what the latest version, how to find the latest version in one second. So I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna go back to my app and I'll try to run it now. And if everything goes smoothly, you should be able to see the default app come up. And so this is just an app that's written in FXML that allows you to switch from secondary to primary view. So this is OK. Now, if you're still seeing problems, then maybe we can move on to the second method. But before we do that, you can see that there's a slight warning here that says that the JavaFX.graphics may not be accessible because it's not through a transitive import process for the modules. Now, I don't think this will give you too many problems, but if you want that warning to go away, we'll jump into the modules.info.java file and we'll add the word transitive uh, before JavaFX controls. That should get rid of the warning because then this will allow it to be transitive, uh, allow the modules to import transitively. And I don't think this is going to cause a problem uh, in general. So the next thing I typically like to do is because there uh, currently this application is writing FXML, uh, I will get rid of all of this, get rid of the primary and secondary controllers as well as this FXML code, just because I typically like to write it in Java. So the second way to create a JavaFX project is just to create it from scratch. So if all of these things don't work, we'll try to create it from scratch. We'll do a create Java project, but this time we'll do no builds. So this is gonna give us a vanilla project. So I'm just gonna go to the same folder as I was before, and I'm gonna name this one demo FX. And once we start up this project, you'll see that app.java just simply gives me a hello world program. At the same time, it's activating some extensions and at this time, you're gonna see that we have this uh, application, everything should be running. So we're gonna jump over to openjfx.io and we're gonna click on download. And this is where we can see the latest version of JavaFX. So if we scroll down a little bit, uh, I am using Mac OS and my architecture is Arc64, which is the M1. So this is the version that, this is the latest version that is out right now. So this will also, you will also be able to pick uh, other latest versions as well. So I'm gonna download the SDK. I'm not gonna download it here, I've already actually done it. So what this will give you is a zip file and you're gonna copy this zip file over to a project or somewhere in your computer that makes sense. So I'm just gonna copy this over to where I'm currently working. And you'll see that this is where it is. Uh, I'm going to then go to Java projects. I'm gonna open all of this up and go to referenced libraries. So the reference libraries are the jar files that you can bring in. And I'm just gonna make sure that I'm on the same folder. I'm gonna go here, go to lib, and I'm going to select all of these jar files. Okay, so select all of these jar files and then select jar libraries. And this is gonna bring this into my project. And the second thing we'll need to do is configure this runtime with some VM options. So I'm just going to come over to run and add configurations. Okay, so this 
uh, configuration is what is telling Java what to do. So this, uh, we have the main class, we have everything here. Um, under the launch, I'm going to add a VM options. Now it doesn't have to be here, but it just makes more sense readable, uh, reading wise that it goes here. So I'm going to add the VM options. I'm going to add a module path, and then I'm going to have a path to this library, add module javafx.controls. Now, if you're working with FXML, you might want to add javafx.fxml as well, but I'll let you play around with that. Uh, as you get developing. This is only a tutorial on getting started. So the next thing we'll do is I'll bring up the terminal app and I'm going to find that the location of where I had that library. I believe we called it demo fx and inside demo fx we had this javafx sdk with the library. Okay so I'm just going to jump in there and I'm going to take a look at the path. So I'm going to copy this path to the lib folder. Remember, this is the lib folder that, that we want access to. So I'm just going to copy it and replace it into here. And this is going to be, uh, this is going to tell the module, where the module paths are to the application while it runs. All right, so I think at this point we should be ready. I'm just going to grab a sample uh, Java application. So this is going to be a uh, app, and then this is going to extend uh, application and application is going to come from uh, JavaFX application. So I'm going to bring in an import into here. Okay, And if it extends application, then it has to run a main that launches the JavaFX application. So we'll do launch args, and then we'll override a start function, a start method which is going to tell JavaFX how to start this application. All right, so now we should be ready. Uh, let's just create a simple VBox here. So I'm going to create a VBox, and uh, we'll put it into a scene. So we'll do scene, new scene, and then we'll put this VBox in there. Uh, currently, this VBox has nothing. So we're going to see a kind of a blank page in one second. So we're going to have the scene, and then we're going to put the scene onto the stage. So the stage that we're given is called primary stage. And we'll say dot set scene. And we'll set scene as the scene that we're given. And then, uh, well, just so that we have something to look at, we'll do primary stage dot, dot set title. And then we'll say mm, uh, just default. And then we will show the primary stage. All right, good. So here's our default application where we can just program on top of it. If we run it now, we should be able to see something that looks like this that says default and kind of a blank page that's 640 by 480. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. See you next time.